What's up? I'm Derek. I sing in State Champs, and we chose the song Real World by Matchbox 20 for songs that saved my life. The first time I heard the song, it must have been when I was a young, young kid uh, in the car on the radio singing along with my mom. That's what I know from as far as my experience with Matchbox 20 and that song in particular. It's like, you know, I never really had any professional like teaching or professional coaching when it comes to singing and stuff. It all comes from my mom. So all I have that's gotten to me to where I am now is my mom saying, take a deep breath there or sing the harmony of this you know, and this and blah, blah, blah. So, and uh, yeah, that song comes to mind a lot. As a teenager, I was a sport kid playing hockey, and I was also a skateboard punk kid, and I was also trying to kind of be everybody's buddy and kind of like bounce around from group to group and kind of like, you know, maybe in, in some ways kind of put on these fronts as to, you know, kind of envisioning who I really am and kind of just trying to be everybody's friend and kind of appease everyone and not really knowing who I am and what me is. So I was half the time living with my mom, going to school there, living with my dad on the weekends, having my sport and hockey friends over there, he's my hockey coach, so it was kind of these like two different worlds I was bouncing back from a lot of the time. And then at one point started a band too, so going to, uh, going away to college was like, do I want to go away to college to play hockey? I'd always like, I liked art too, I was still a skater punk kid deciding if I wanted to live that, that pipe dream, and then I also started this band that somehow signed a record deal, and they said drop everything and you're going to focus on music now. Here we are nine years later, I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, my mom was like super music. Uh, related and like she was in bands when I was growing up too like she was in like bar bands and stuff I was always going like as a kid getting dragged to her band practice and stuff and I'd get up on a drum kit and play along or I'd try to like sing with her and stuff and just mainly I was just I think causing trouble and like being annoying to them the whole time but I mean being surrounded by music is just that's all I've really known since I was little. I guess the advice I would give myself as a teenager was to kind of you know maybe kind of focus on you a little more and not anybody else around you. Um, like I said, I was bouncing around from different cliques and different friend groups and stuff and trying to be everybody's buddy and just kind of like be some type of hero or some type of superhero to everyone when I was really still trying to figure out who I was. And uh, that could have came a lot sooner and would have helped a lot um, in my early 20s and stuff like that. So. It, it was so embarrassing, my like timeline of like fandom, because it started with like Hanson. And then it moved on to boy band central, like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. But then that slowly turned into like Eminem, and then Linkin Park, and then I found punk rock, and like I loved Fall Out Boy and Coheed and Cambria and, and the the drive through Records era and the Victory Records era with with, with Census Fail and Hawthorne Heights and Bayside and Atreyu and all that stuff. And then I found MySpace, and the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, there was a few, I guess in like the emo era and stuff, when I first started getting into Warped Tour scene, like bands are really latched on to, to bands like, like Census Fail, like the Let It Unfold You record, and um, Bayside's uh, self-titled record is another huge one for me. It's also my mom's favorite album of all time, too, so we share that. Um, <laughs> it's very odd. And uh, my all-time favorite album is um, The Starting Line, Direction, which uh, I still relate to today, and it influences the way that I write music. And, and overall outlook on life. I grew up kind of like being so young and drawn to these lyrics that were very like bleak and dark but not really kind of understanding them yet. Being like 14 and 15, all I wanted to do was have a microphone that wasn't plugged in and scream, bite to break skin, break skin, and you know, just like a lady in a blue dress like in my, in my room. It's, um, it's very funny like, looking back on it now. <laughs> I loved Bayside and I thought I knew all the, the lyrics and stuff until we did our first tour with them. Yeah, like one of our first tours was with Bayside. Uh, we were opening for them and Anthony had to leave the tour. And he knew that I was a big fan and there was still a week left of tour. And uh, he took it upon himself to come to me and say, what do you think, can you fill in, can you sing? Like the set, do you know the words? It's like, yeah, I know the words, I can, I can take this. <laughs> so I ended up uh, being the new frontman for Bayside as a 21 year old kid on one of my first like US tours and had to re-look up a lot of the lyrics just to double check. And I'm looking at some of these songs I have to sing, I'm like, wow, these are dark songs. <laughs> I hate myself more than I ever went on. I'm burnt out at 21. Well, I was singing 21. <laughs> he was 22 at the time. <laughs> What's pretty important is to know that like, it's pretty easy to kind of get hypothetical and to get in your head about you know, self-esteem issues, self-confidence issues, stuff like that, and start to go, well, what if I was like this? What if I was this type of person? You know, Whether you, you put yourself in this like, escapist mindset where it's like I would love to be anything else than what I am now 
like, what, what if I was my own boss? What if I was God? What if I was a superhero? All that stuff wouldn't mean shit if you weren't you, you know? Like, I guess you're you for a reason, and it's going to take time for you to figure out what that is exactly. And that's what it happened with me a little bit. And I'm still learning every day, so um, I think it's important to take a deep breath sometimes, take a step back and look at you for who you are. Yeah, we came up in such a, a digital age, that's for sure. Like, when we started, it was all, all social media. And, I mean, we owe a lot to it for the upbringing and the success of our career. But also, there's some downsides to that, too. And I've noticed it with a lot of people that I meet as we've been touring. Um, you see the ups and downs of what kind of pressure that can put on somebody. Or just as a human being, too. Not even someone with a platform like that in advance. Just on a normal person. Where photos and stories and thoughts are being exchanged every second and uh, you know judgments and everything gets flown in the wrong places and the never really in the right places in my opinion so um that can mess with people's heads and it still does with myself too in a way um i think everyone's still trying to find a nice balance of when to take a step back from your phone or your laptop and stuff and to kind of focus on the real world um <laughs> that was terrible <laughs> But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Constructive criticism is immediate these days, especially when you put something like a song out into the world and the internet. Or if you just tweet how you're feeling. Like it doesn't it could be anything. So, um it's hard to really shy away from it and look away from that stuff. Um, the replies and the reviews and the critics and stuff like that. Um but it's important to have some self love in that era too, to just kind of like if you like something then who cares what anybody else thinks, right? But it's still going to take some time to figure that out and balance the two. It's definitely a fight for your mental state, and only you can decide where that goes. Um, I think we're in a decent place right now where we can kind of be a generation to think about things a little differently before we go straight to things like social media, whether it be Twitter, or Facebook, Instagram, comments, and things like that. Um, Realizing how it can affect someone in real life, in the real world, and their headspace and their mental state before you go ahead and say certain things can really make a big difference um, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, I do love meeting fans and I love hearing stories and I love being there for them, but only to a certain extent. You know, when something's actually wrong with someone or you're thinking that you're struggling with things like mental issues and whatnot, it's important to reach out to someone that you trust, you know, and get the right help that you need because it's, it, it is out there. My first concert was uh, KISS, <laughs> the Psycho Circus 3D tour. My mom took me, I was like six. <laughs>